Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Ladybird browser update for May 2024. It has been a lovely month in the project, as usual. And we have a bunch of things to talk about, as usual. So let's just drop right into it. Uh, the first topic is performance. So we have put a bunch of effort into performance this month. Um, last month, when I did the update video, I was demoing x.com. And some people pointed out that this is very, very, very slow. And uh, you were right. It was very, very, very slow. And it, it's still very slow, but <laughs> but a lot less slow um, because we have been putting in a bunch of effort on performance. So um, I want to tell you about some of the things that we've done. Uh, the first thing is JavaScript performance. So um, these are two of the classic JavaScript benchmarks, Kraken and Octane. Uh, the red bar is where we were on May 1st. And the green bar is where we are now on the last of May. Um, so as you can see, we've improved substantially in, in JavaScript performance on these benchmarks. And the yellow bar then is JavaScript Core, the JavaScript engine from Safari. Uh, and I put it here on the, on the chart because um, one of the long-term goals is to match the performance of um, other production JavaScript engines like JavaScript Core and V8 uh, when they run without a JIT compiler. So just for reference, you can see here that uh, we are substantially faster at JavaScript this month, um, but we still have a, a long way to go to catch up to JavaScript core. Um, or just put into numbers, we are uh, 1.65x faster since last month on Kraken and 1.84% 1.84x uh, faster on Octane. Um, so we're moving in the right direction here. Um, and uh, of course, this is all thanks to a whole bunch of optimizations that we've done. These are some of them. Uh, it was mostly Alex and myself doing these optimizations this month. So uh, thank you, Alex, for helping me make JavaScript go faster. Um, we, we're going to have to do a lot more optimizations, but uh, um, we're, we're making good progress. Uh, and then another thing that we've improved is cookie performance, uh, which sounds a bit weird. People don't usually talk about cookie performance, but... Uh, um, the way our cookies work is that they live in a SQL database uh, that is owned by the UI or browser process. And um, it works that way because cookies have to be accessible to all tabs, and every tab runs in its own process. So that's why the UI process owns the, the cookie storage. Um, and this month, Tim Flynn has added a cookie cache to the UI process, which means that it no longer has to uh, query the SQL database every time somebody wants to read or write a cookie. And it turns out this was a huge speed up on websites that use a lot of cookies. For example, it saves 20 seconds when loading the Twinings uh, website, uh, which is just crazy. So now you can actually load it without going crazy. Uh, so thank you, Tim, for, for adding a cookie cache. And then another big one, is network request performance. So uh, until this month, we've done one um, connection at a time when making outbound HTTPS or HTTP requests. But uh, this month, Ali has made the uh, request server multi-threaded so that um, connections can happen in parallel. So we can connect to uh, multiple hosts in parallel or the same host multiple times, I guess, in parallel, um, which means that all that connection setup time where you do the TLS negotiation and all that stuff is no longer serialized going one at a time. And this is extremely helpful on websites with a lot of sub resources, like a lot of images or a lot of scripts, a lot of CSS. Um, so this is sort of the third major performance improvement. So we got JavaScript, um, cookies, and network request multi-threading. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the big performance thing. Um, then let's look at some other browser improvements. So this month, we've added Find in Page. Um, this is something that I've missed very much. I didn't even realize how much I missed it until we suddenly had it. <laughs> um, but it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to search for text on the page, and you can cycle through the uh, next and previous matches with um, the buttons or, I guess, keyboard shortcuts. And this was implemented by Tim Ledbetter. So thank you, Tim Ledbetter, for, for doing this. Um, there are a couple of caveats. Like, I think um, it can't yet handle situations where you have like a, a piece of text that is split across multiple text nodes and things like that. So there are some things that we need to improve. 
but um, this is already a fantastic thing to have because finding things by scrolling and looking for for them that's a very silly way of finding things um, all right and then also this month we have added a hamburger menu so uh, that's this little little guy there in the circle and if you click him um, it opens up a menu and um, I personally like this a lot of people like this because it just removes uh, the, the menu bar that's normally there at the top of the window it gives you a little bit more vertical space but uh, for those of you who don't like hamburger menus, there is an option to turn it off, and it will have uh, you will have a permanent menu bar instead. Uh, but I like it. I, I I prefer to have my whole window just be a big browser. Um, so the hamburger menu was added by Jamie. So thank you, Jamie, for doing that. And looking at some web engine features, uh, this month we have Clip Path Polygon. So uh, this was implemented by Benjamin. And uh, essentially, it allow, now allows us to do arbitrary polygon clips in a CSS, which uh, here is demonstrated by a um, CSS clip path maker tool that I was testing out. And um, turns out it just works in, in our browser now. And I think um, Benjamin was motivated by there's like a little tiny clip path on uh, GitHub pull requests. Uh, whenever somebody has a comment, there's like a little uh, speech bubble um, clip path thing. Um, so he, he went and implemented all this just to support that. But uh, this is really great. So thank you, Benjamin, for adding clip path polygon. And Andrew, this month, uh, finally made us able to open Windows for reals with window.open. So uh, until now, window.open has been opening tabs, but never actually opening windows. Uh, but now that all the infrastructure necessary is finally in place, uh, thanks to the work of Andrew and, and other folks as well, um, he was able to like, take those final steps and make window.open able to open windows. Uh, of course, it generally is not great when websites open pop-up windows, but there are a couple of legit use cases, uh, like e-commerce website popping up PayPal and things like that. So this is a great thing to have. Now we have it. Thank you, Andrew. And as usual, We've also implemented a ton of new web APIs uh, or fleshed out missing functionality in existing APIs. Uh, what you see on screen here is just a selection of, I think, like the entirely new APIs this month. Um, but um, every month, there's just more and more APIs going in. And uh, I think this month we had uh, myself, Shannon, um, Tim Ledbetter and a bunch of other folks as well adding APIs. Uh, I wish I could remember everybody who was doing it, but I uh, really appreciate all the work on expanding our support for the web platform. Um, this is really cool. OK, now that was a bit of talking. Let's take a look at where the browser is now with a demo. All right, let's take a look at Ladybird today. First thing I want to show you is the hamburger menu, I guess. It is right here. Uh, and I like it. If you don't like it, you can switch to a regular menu bar here. Then it goes back to this style. But I kind of like the hamburger, so we'll stick with that. And I talked a bunch about performance. So one of our big performance targets is x.com because it is a fairly complicated website lots of stuff going on and I showed it off last month and it just took forever to load um, forever to do any kind of interactions so it should certainly be a little bit faster this month um, we're loading resources in parallel uh, our JavaScript engine is a lot faster and um, we have a handful of optimizations all over the place um, and yeah, it's still obviously not impressive, but you can see images popping in very, very quickly compared to the um, serialized, serialized image loading that we had last month. And um, it's fairly snappy, like reacting here to the um, hovering of things. So I am happy with the progress we've made on the site, but we've got a long way to go still. Um, another thing I mentioned was twinings. So we managed to shave about 20 seconds of load time off of twinings which is crazy. So that's time that we were spending just uh, accessing cookies. And thanks now to the cookie cache, 
Uh, you don't have to wait 20 seconds for the site to load. As you can see, it's already loaded. Uh, so that's a, that's a huge improvement. Um, and then I wanted to show you, I have um, this game that we like to test with sometimes. It is um, a port of, oh, maybe I need to, I need to relaunch the browser. Yeah. Uh, a port of another world. It's an old DOS game. And uh, it used to be that we couldn't really run this game without saturating the CPU and we wouldn't get like the smooth animation. But now, thanks to all the JavaScript engine work this month, the game actually runs smoothly. And not only that, but if we run top here, we can see that the web content process is no longer hitting 100% uh, CPU utilization. Although it does, it does get kind of high sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon. Um, now, here we go. Yeah. So when it's like idle or just uh, animating the game loop, it generally stays below 100%. So uh, this is really, really nice. It's an example of something just getting better and smoother from, from performance work that we're doing anyway. Um, so let me show you something else. I had this uh, demo that I put a little bit of time into improving. It's a like a, a particle system with a, a whole lot of particles. And it's still very sluggish, but at the start of the month, it was too sluggish to even look at. Um, so this is something that we could spend more time improving. I think um, I managed to get rid of most of the JavaScript bottlenecks here. Now there's a lot of painting bottlenecks to look at. And uh, yeah, it's just, just a random thing, but I, I like these kind of things. And uh, final thing I wanted to show you is uh, we have a demo page here that just tests out all of our CSS transformations. And if we look at the rotate transforms, you can see that they're not really looking like rotates, um, at least not like they're supposed to look. Uh, but if we uh, launch Ladybird with a new flag, experimental CPU transforms, uh, we can then get them to render, hopefully correctly. Uh, oh, shoot, wait, that, <laughs> that opened in the same Ladybird process, of course. Let me force a new process. Okay, so now we have two separate Ladybirds. And if we scroll down, this version here with the... Um, Uh, with with the experimental CPU transforms, we can see that it's doing actual rotations the way they're supposed to be. So this is um, work by Benjamin, who implemented a new 2D transform um, system for us. And I guess it is experimental, so it's not quite ready to, to um, be enabled by default, but it's looking really promising. So this is exciting stuff. And that's everything I wanted to show you today. So thank you so much for stopping by and staying up to date with the Ladybird browser project. Thank you so much to everybody who contributed this month. Um, it's been awesome as usual. And um, if you want to come chat, you'll find links in the video description for that. If you want to sponsor development, there are links as well. Uh, and we have some really interesting thing coming up um, very soon. So uh, I look forward to telling you more about that. But uh, in the meantime, I guess this is goodbye for now.